Hello, my dear students. How are you all? So I welcome you all to the very second class of corporate restructuring. Hope all of you are finding it. I mean, as a one of the most common subjects, or nobody is finding it like it's. It is going to be a difficult subject, right? So in this class, it's not like that. This is going to be really difficult. It's really going to be logical, and only such kind of things will be there which we can understand up to our level, up to uh, the best, and we can write an exam up to the best so that we can easily score. 65 marks na huh? that is going to be our target even we can score more than that so let's go ahead let's talk about the things which we are going to cover in this class itself we are going to talk about the other provisions which were relating to the introduction class in the very first class which we have covered what we have covered basically we have covered what is corporate restructuring why there is a need for corporate restructuring we have covered the types of growth we have written some more types i mean some more things on that apart from that we have covered that what are the types of restructuring in which we have covered that what was financial restructuring technological market and organizational restructuring apart from that there were some terms there were some terms which were basically known as modes tools of corporate restructuring go follow up and you're getting me now okay now you're getting me. so over there what we have learned we have learned that what were the basically the modes of corporate restructuring now the modes of corporate restructuring are basically first of all we have covered merger what was merger merger was a thing in which one company gets absorbed to buy another company so we have taken like an example let us suppose that was a limited plus b limited after that they become a limited that means b limited has been totally absorbed b limited has been totally absorbed digested by a limited so what was that that was a merger what is amalgamation amalgamation is just let us suppose that there were two or more companies a plus b is equal to c limited a plus b is equal to ab limited so what was that they were framing a new identity a new company was formed and the companies which were earlier available are not in existence now their legal entity is not i mean will be carried forward will not be available anymore so first of all in merger one company absorbs another whereas when it comes to amalgamation it's very really simple that a new entity is formed apart from that we have also seen that uh, the next term was reconstruction right so reconstruction was basically an art of constructing again repairing or restoring it back to the basic version restore to defaults which we have talked about the basic version in your mobile phones now apart from that we have also uh, uh, we also discuss about the transfer of business from one company to another company and that another company was specifically formed for that purpose only that at one day we are going to transfer all the business which we have carried in from part in this partnership firm to this company we will be doing that now apart from that there was only one thing which was left as the company will be able to will be there into liquidation what is liquidation liquidation is the basically the process of death of a company okay there is a process of dissolution so what happens over there that is really simple that let us suppose a company is going there into liquidation and the shareholders definitely when it comes to a company there are some shareholders those shareholders will be getting shares of a new company that is also restructured we'll come to know about that we'll be discussing about i mean what are the powers which are vested with the government itself when it comes to merger amalgamation and property interest so let's talk about the difference between now hope all of you have revised that hope all of you know about it really very well now basically in this class we are going to talk about the difference between amalgamation what is amalgamation and what else no not merger we're going to discuss about amalgamation and reconstruction amalgamation and reconstruction so first of all let us consider number of companies number of companies then nature then business then apart from that apart from business we need to consider one more point which is purpose now all of you know all the things about 
these topics which we are going to cover in amalgamation there are two or more companies there are two or more companies which will and after that a new company is formed a new company is formed now none of the companies is going to absorb one another there will be nothing like that one company is going to absorb another why god so i was just saying that you people are not sleeping actually so what happens is amalgamation two companies come together and a new company is formed in reconstruction it basically says one company is involved one company is involved and rights of members rights of members and creditors are rearranged so was be do you still remember the example which i have given in the very first class in the second class itself okay i have given in the class one what was that we people have seen a room which was totally messed up and after that things were rearranged exactly so what is reconstruction over here when it comes to difference between it clearly says sir when a company basically rearranges the rights of members how that can be rearranged who are members sir equity shareholders are members right so their rights are arranged how the rights are arranged that let us suppose that there are two share two kind of shareholders one of them who have totally paid their amount and one of them who have Who still have three rupees pending on each share? Now both of them will be getting equal rights. No, they will be getting exactly. They will be getting equal rights. But let us assume that the people who have not paid three rupees, they are not getting. They will be getting. But let us assume that they they will not be getting equal rights. Now what the company has done? Company has given equal rights to that person. Who has given ten rupees as full payment, and to that person also who has given seven rupees and the three rupees are still pending. Now let's go ahead. Nature amalgamation is basically external in nature. External in nature, and when it comes to reconstruction, it is internal in nature. Internal in nature. internal nature yeah exactly because it is basically concerned with members and creditors and rearranging their rights so what happens to over in in reconstruction does the business get changed no sir same business is carried on same business is carried on If nothing when it comes to rearranging the rights of members and creditors nothing is going to affect the business of the company that can be reliance that can be bata that can be gyani is that can be bitu tikki wala anybody 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 the business is going to be there same at the same position at the same each and everything nothing is going to be affected when it comes to business okay but when it comes to amalgamation let us suppose these two or more companies they were basically operating in pharmaceuticals just like ranbaxy sipla okay so they were operating in pharmaceuticals and they come up and they have now incorporated a new company and this new company is going to operate in motor vehicles oh really how can that happen that can happen na that is not mandatory but that can happen that can be done such things can be modified okay so when it comes to business it clearly says business may be sold may be sold taken over that means can be changed can be changed so what is basically the purpose purpose of amalgamation what is the purpose of coming together let us suppose there are two persons only who are famous for that okay okay i can understand the food outlets of course all of us used to feel hungry when it comes to dominos so let us suppose that there are basically two outlets there were basically two outlets when it comes to a particular area that is delhi now what are they so they are dominos and pizza now what happened both of them got amalgamated both of them got amalgamated and they have opened a new unit named as super props pizza yeah exactly so what was the purpose the purpose was basically to diversify and expand business 
to diversify or expand business that was the very first purpose right after that the second purpose is revive a sick unit revive a sick unit what is this generally sick unit is basically a unit which has turned out to be sick i mean when uh, this term was basically used in sick industrial companies act so which has been replaced now by insolvency and bankruptcy code sick was basically when a company has become sick that means a company is unable to pay debt the liabilities of the company have exceeded the assets of the company that was the situation when a company turns out to be sick so this was the purpose of amalgamation now what is the purpose of restructuring to compound with compound means to settle over here compound with creditors to compound with creditors and determine liability determine liability there are basically two terms over here when it comes to restructuring internally what is saying is saying that it is to be done internally na so this internal reconstruction basically is all about compromise and arrangement compromise and arrangement you have must have also heard about that in drafting as well so what is compromise compromise uh, this is just for your knowledge compromise arises only when there is a dispute okay let us suppose that there is a dispute between the company and the creditors itself there are a lot of creditors and the company basically has a dispute with all of them now what is going to happen now the people who are there now the people who are creditors they have a dispute with the company that can be related to interest rate that can be related to delay in payment that can be related to i mean non fulfillment of payment terms that can be anything so whatever the scenario which is carried out the creditors are not happy so they have they are involved into a they have filed a petition or an anything like that can be done and after that what will be done what the company will approach with the creditors to settle that dispute and to compromise right whenever you, you even we people used to have disputes then what happens after that after that compromise happens just like in that case whenever there is a dispute the involvement of dispute is mandatory for compromise and after that there is arrangement arrangement is generally just like that let us suppose that the company super prof super prof, profs have has issued shares in market and the shares were issued at 1000 rupees now now the shares are i mean they are moving at a very good speed and it is very much expected that they are going to touch 2000 rupees in next 6 months now the creditors of the company they are really happy looking at the company and they are really satisfied that we are dealing with one of the companies which is moving at a very good speed which is going to provide huge amount of investment benefits that can be investment return to the people so creditors approached the company and they said so creditors approached the company and they said sir as we can see that the super profs is moving at the very i mean uh, at moving at a speed of 200 kilometers even more than that so can you please give us shares in return of the money which i mean which is owed to you from our side we they are creditors definitely super profs need to pay them so they said sir can you please give us shares in return of our money so that is what is that that is an arrangement that in in return of money they will be getting shares that is an arrangement and there is no dispute so that is basically the difference between compromise and arrangement there is very a base uh, uh, i mean a very much basic difference that is that is that is dispute is always there in compromise and it is never in arrangement so let's go ahead that was one of the i mean extra topics which i have already explained that to you so the next is that merger now let us understand the mer difference between merger and acquisition what is a merger merger is basically two or more companies come together and they form a single new company right this is as as what happens what happens over there no sir merger is not this yeah exactly congratulations you people are not sleeping actually okay so this is not merger exactly so i can easily figure out that you people are not sleeping congratulations
So merger is basically one company absorbs another company. Right? And what happens is acquisition. One company takes over another company. One company takes over another company. Here, one company absorbs another company. And when it comes to acquisition, it, one company takes over another company. So it looks like same exactly. Over here, sir, companies at 2013 applies. And over here, CB acquisition and substantial takeover code 2011 applies. Okay. So we'll be discussing that also. And when it comes to a merger, what happens in merger? Stocks of both companies. Are surrendered and new stocks are issued. Don't write it as, as both, write it as old company or the company which is going to end. Let us suppose X limited plus Y limited is going to be X limited. So this is basically a merger now. So this is old company, which is Y limited. So all the shareholders of Y limited will be given shares of X limited. Got it? Now, what happens over here? Acquirer. Acquirer is the person who is going to acquire the next company. Let us suppose that there is a company A limited. A limited wants to acquire control and Z limited. A limited wants to take over Z limited. He is the person who is looking for takeover. We will call him acquirer. And he is the person to whom it is to whom the person who will get takeover. We call him as target company. We call him as target company. No issues. We'll be explaining that again to you once we will be there and take over to acquire swallows. The business of target company. Acquirer basically swallows and digests the business. But when it comes to amalgamation, it digests. It digests, it absorbs the company, the total company, not the business itself. The total company, the shares, the liabilities, assets, each and everything. But here it comes for business and other things as well. So, should we go ahead? We are done with both of the difference between now. Different, different between. Yeah, exactly. Now is the time to move ahead and talk about the next topics which are already prevailing in market. But what is that? That, that is disinvestment. How many of you have heard about the disinvestment of Indian government of you or you can say central government this is very much prevailing in news at this time in air Asia government is basically planning to reduce its stake from 40 to 49 percent in air Asia at present it's a company which is totally owned by government now government is planning to sell that stake to private people to the private companies or to the general public itself so disinvestment is generally also known as privatization let us suppose let me take one more example what generally happens that let us suppose we have indian railways indian railways are totally in control of government exactly they are totally in control of government but apart from that Apart from that, sir, let us suppose now that the government want to sell their 20% stake to some other people who are non-government. So what is that? Selling your stake to people who are not a part of government is disinvestment. Now, disinvestment is basically transfer of assets, shares, control, from government to private sector. We generally call it as privatization also. We generally used to call it as privatization also. Okay. 
So, how is the process? I mean, the Air Asia pr uh, proposal, which is almost is also pending now. This is not the first time that the government has planned to basically release their share in Air Asia. That this is the second time this proposal has been made, and the every time the proposal is made, every time it got rejected. I mean, the last time that was the first time when it was made, it got rejected. So, what is basically a process of disinvestment? First of all, the proposals are kept. Proposals are kept before CCD. Cafe coffee day. Let's have a coffee. Right? So just like this, you people used to use short forms in examination. And just like this, that you people are not understanding anything. Just like this, the examiner does not understand anything. So he even considered this as cafe coffee day, CCD. Let's go to CCD. So the CCD full form is Cabinet Committee. It's Cabinet Committee on Disinvestment. First of all, this the proposal will be placed before Cabinet Committee on Disinvestment. Apart from that, there was selection of advisor. Selection of advisor. Now, the next is issue of advertisement. Issue of advertisement in newspaper for public comments. Advertisement is issued in newspaper in order to invite public comments. Apart from that, now, there are some short listings that what are the short listings, what are the basically the outcomes. So what are basically the things which needs to be improved. After that, drafting of share purchase agreement that who is going to purchase and how many shares government is basically willing to release. How many shares are government is basically looking to save. Drafting of share purchase agreement and shareholders agreement. So, what is this basically? This is going to be a deal between the the company and I mean uh, the CCD Cabinet Committee on Disinvestment and the company which is going to purchase that shares. That for Air Asia, the proposal is pending. After once the proposal gets approved, the advisor is selected, and after that, the parties of a lot of people that government is willing to sell the stake in Air Asia to Reliance or Kingfisher or Sahara, whatever the company is going to be. So then after that, this is basically the drafting of shareholder agreement and share purchase agreement. So once they will be done with the drafting part itself, after that, the yes, finalization. Sir. So once that is done, the finalization of all the drafting things and other things relating to bidding and the parties who are there, each and everything related to the price, number of shares, each and everything, the payment terms, other things as well, that is done. Once the finalization is done, approve proposals and agreements. So whatever the proposals and agreements which are executed between basically the government and the person who is going to purchase that stake, they are approved and the things get over over again. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's talk about now the next topic, which is a joint venture. Joint venture, which we generally use as JV. Okay. So what does it JV, uh, okay, let me tell you the give you an example of a joint venture which was really very common. Have you heard about this company, Unitech? Press Terino. They entered into a joint venture named as Uninor. Any of you have seen that? Uninor? No? Nobody has, I mean, seen that. There were advertisements on TV as well, you know. No? 
of X leagues. So, so what happens over there is a new enterprise is formed. A new enterprise is formed with active participation active participation in ownership so what basically happens in this new enterprise what is this this is a new enterprise and in this new enterprise both of the parties i mean unitec and telenova will have active participation in ownership control and management they are going to have participation in ownership control and management so in ownership there will be i mean the portion will be divided as 40 50 50 50 60 40 whatever the scenario is going to be or after that the control basically who is going to control and under whose control the management is going to be that is that is totally decided and the new enterprise is formed with the two parties having total participation i mean total things will be discussed among both of them when it comes to ownership control and management so next is it says is business enterprise business enterprise is formed with is formed with is formed for basically is formed for profit and which <coughs> parties share responsibilities in agreed manner agreed manner i mean he's totally talking about profit sharing over here this is just the way of presentation which the examiner is looking for as you need to copy paste the same thing which we have written over here this in agreed manner sharing technology sharing technology risk access to money I mean, whatever the things are going to be that can be related to sharing technology, that can be related to risk, that can be related to accessing the market. Both of the things will be there under control of both of the parties and both parties will be taking active participation in that things. It's not like that, that the only Telenor is going to take care of Unitec. It's not like that only Unitec is going to take each and everything forward. Only Unitec is going to take care of share. Uh, I mean sharing technology and only Telenor is going to take care of risk. No, each and everything will be divided as per the agreed responsibilities. Let us suppose I take the responsibility of sharing up to 80% and you take 20% as I have. I am a person who knows te about technology, a lot of things and I know about technology a lot of things. Let us assume I'm a bit poor at technology also. So what happens generally that I'm sorry. So, where was that? Yeah. So, let us suppose that there's one person who knows about technology. He'll be taking more command over technology as compared to the another person. So, that is generally the scenario. Okay. Hope all of you have written it. Okay. How many of you have visited BTW, Bitu Tikki Wala, or you have visited Gyanis, or you have visited, I mean, Nerolas, or you have visited anything like that? What is that basically? Have a, has anyone of you? This is basically franchising. Do you know about franchising of super props as well? Do you know about franchising of super props? There are a lot of things basically which are basically franchisees. Do you know what a franchisee is? Franchisee is basically working. Let us suppose that, I mean, I have taken up a license, I have taken a franchisee of BTW. How many of you know this brand? BTW. It's Bitu Tikki Wala. Do you know that? No. Nobody knows that. Oh, really? Okay. So, if you don't know about BTW, have you heard about First Choice? 
first choice first choice is basically the people who used to deal in second hand cars second hand bikes you know that so anyways basically what happens over there in the case of franchising that there's a person who is the real owner of bdw a real owner of let us suppose super trucks we are over here we are basically the concerned super trucks now what we are going to do we are game, going to give a franchise to someone else let us suppose it's mr x it's mr x so this franchise will be given to mr x now on the right right to carry on business of super dogs by purchasing the franchise have you heard about aapki rasoi aapki rasoi basically a food outlet aapki rasoi that is also a franchise gyanis gyanis ice cream that is also a franchise i'm not taking that much big brands like So okay, it's a part of. I mean, we have seen in our society so many times. So, anyways, so right to carry on the business of super cars. Apart from that, he is going to pay fees. He is going to pay fees. In return of this fees, let me tell you that who, uh, he is what we call as franchisee. the person who gets and he is what we call as franchiser the person who gives franchisee is franchiser the person who receives franchisee is franchisee okay so here he is talking about that franchisee is authorized to sell and distribute goods and services goods and services apart from that the very next point takes that that contract of franchising the contract of franchising can be oral written expressed Or implied. It can be oral. It can be written. It can be expressed. It can be implied as well. So now, contract can be for fixed or like certain period of time. contract can be for a fixed period of time let us suppose that can be for a period of 5 years 10 years 2 years whatever the time that can be fixed and apart from that there can be a certain period of time or that it's not certain it's uncertain okay and that can be for i mean for perpetuity for lifetime that can also be given for that okay Till the time our brand will be there, super cross will be there. This franchisee has been given to you. Okay, so the next point here, why talks about that the very last point of franchising is franchisee is authorized to use logo, trademark. and symbol wow what a great thing which they have already mentioned the whole these things are basically synonyms of trademark what is the trademark trademark is basically the use of nike right so first of all first of all my dear students franchisee can use let us suppose that let us take in this example then how would you know that mr x is basically carrying on a business of super props he should affix that logo of super props over there if there would have been no logo no name of use of super props nothing like that nothing like that the products of super props are being sold over there i mean the services are distributed over there nothing like that that what kind of franchise is that 
I have taken a franchise of BTW. I have started making tikkis, burgers, and blah blah blah. Lots of many things. But there is nothing mentioned over there like BTW. There is nothing mentioned over there like Yanis. Nothing. Okay. So that is nothing like which is mentioned over there. How would I come to know about that? It's a franchisee. That for that franchisee is authorized to use logo, trademark, and symbol as well. So should we go ahead? Hope all of you have noted it down. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about the next topic now. The next topic is slum sale. It's slum sale. What is slum sale? Anybody? You must have heard about it. Companies act. So basically, it's uh, section number one eighty, subsection one, clause A, to be read with section number one one zero of Companies Act two thousand thirty. When it comes to the previous Act, Companies Act nineteen fifty six, this was section number two ninety three. So what is slump sale? Slump sale is slump sale is basically a very, I mean, easy term which clearly says sale of sale of whole or substantially whole of undertaking whole of undertaking in case of company board of directors can sell whole or substantial part of undertaking substantial part of undertaking but but if company that means board of director can sell by board resolution only they just need a board resolution they do not need anything else in order to sell that substantial part of undertaking in order to sell the undertaking they don't need if there is only one company in case of a company and if company basically owns more than one undertaking if there is only one undertaking of a company the board of directors have all powers okay if company has only one undertaking the powers are given to board of directors hope all of you are not you know listen 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 yeah don't get scared yeah it's okay i'm not scary so if company has only one undertaking then the power has been given to then the powers are given to board of Yes, exactly, exactly. If company has more than one undertaking, I mean more than one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever the undertakings are, then the powers are given to shareholders. Consent of shareholders is required by special resolution. By special resolution under section one one zero, that means one one zero clearly talks about postal ballot. And let me tell you one more thing in order to be more intelligent. This was ordinary resolution before. This has been amended and has been changed to special resolution. Yeah. Okay. So should we go ahead? So this special resolution was ordinary resolution before. we just need to pass an over but this has been amended and a special resolution now is required in case if a company has only one undertaking board resolution company has more than one undertaking that can be 2 3 4 5 whatever the number of undertakings are you require a special resolution pursuant to section number 181a section 181a plus 110 of ca companies act 2013 got it got it should we go ahead let's go then now now should we go now so as you are going to pass sr you are going to file mgd 40 in right as you know this really very well this has been mentioned mentioned in the section number 117 
just be rest assured you don't do not need to remember all the section you just need to remember those sections which are considered very much which are of which are generally of very much importance just like that you need to remember this section section number 180 slump sale okay so when it comes to section number 180 it talks about undertaking there is one word which has been used again and again which is known as undertaking none of you have raised this down have you right so what is undertaking undertaking is basically which gives i mean 20% of net worth which has come which has given which has shared or which has provided 20% of net worth to the company that is the net with that will be called as undertaking okay that will be called as net worth or total income which has been generated which has been generated did you got the meaning so what is that let us suppose a company is there a limited a limited has a company and uh, with that company is z limited z limited has given a share of 15% in total income of in total income of z uh, total income is let us suppose 100 100 rupees and this has given a share of 15% will that be undertaking no that will not be undertaking apart from that there is a company which is x limited x limited has 25% has shared has provided 25% of income in this 100 rupees so will x limited be a undertaking yes it's a undertaking it will be considered as an undertaking now apart from this undertaking there is one more word which is which has been used which is substantial whenever the word substantial has been used it means 20% or more of value of undertaking i mean the undertaking which we have considered you know the meaning of undertaking now if it's an undertaking of 20% of more 20% of more of value has been there then it's substantial substantial means the same as associate one okay so we go ahead got it got it yes or no got it now so let's go ahead let's talk about now we have only mm, 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 two things let's hurry up let's finish it fast so the next is demerger what is demerger basically merger is basically when two companies come together and they form a new company or oh, sorry one company absorbs another so what is demerger demerger is basically let us suppose that there's a company a limited a limited used to do manufacture shoes manufacture shoes plus um, it has some wholesale outlets wholesale outlets on which they used to sell now a limited used to carry out both of the functions right a limited used to manufacture shoes and as well as they have some wholesale outlets on which what they basically do they used to sell them to consumers now what happens a limited has separated the second option how okay, let me change the ink now this part a limited has retained one part this is part 1 this is part 1 of business and this is part 2 of business right so we, they a limited has retained this part a limited has retained one part of manufacturing shoes they say okay i will we'll be manufacturing shoes all the time but retail outlets this has been given to b limited a new entity has been formed and that has been given this option of b limited okay in spite of doing the whole work what i am basically doing i am just retaining the one workman license and transferring the other to new company so how we need to write it we need to write it like division or separation of different of different undertakings of business 
corporate partition of company corporate partition of company into undertakings what they have done in this partition they have basically retained one part retaining one part they have retained one part now one part has been retained now a limited said that we'll be doing the work of manufacturing shoes now retaining one part and transferring the other undertaking to resulting company to resulting company so what is this this is a new company it's a new company can be called as resulting company as well yes we can call it when it comes to reconstruction the new company is known as resulting company so what i have basically done i have kept a one work with myself that is i'll be i'll be delivering the class i'll be giving lectures again and again so and the doubts which need to be resolved will be answered by my assistant will be answered by my team so what i'm basically doing i'm just doing the demerger that i'll be looking after the classes only and my team is going to look after the second part okay should we go ahead okay let's go ahead so the next part over here is talks about strategic alliance how many of you are interested in politics anyone i mean who was there and, and who haven't do you, do you have any of the people i mean is there anything in our class anybody in our class who is interested in i mean politics or who, the people who used to watch politics even sometimes when uh, it's sort of like i i don't want to watch politics but still your dad would just hey come on i mean sit over here just look at the look at the politics what generally happens that uh, i need to i got to call right I, I, i'm just i'll just come huh? i'll just come after that what we used to do goli de dete hain goli you know that goli postponing a particular thing that is goli dena so strategic alliance it's an agreement between agreement between two or more parties agreement between two or more parties to cooperate with each other to cooperate with each other and to accomplish common goals and strive for mutual benefit now resources plus competencies is equal to mutual interest this is the whole phenomena beyond strategic alliance what is an alliance that you have heard about it so many times that we have an alliance government we have a uh, gathbandhan ki sarkar have you heard about it it's a hindi term gathbandhan that is an alliance so what generally happens bjp and shiv sena basically come up for making a government in maharashtra same is there the bjp come up with the government of nitish exactly with nitish i don't know the its full name the party name is jdu for framing for forming a government in bihar as well yeah exactly the chief minister of bihar resigns uh, it's not i mean the, the latest news it's sort of like i mean it's a little bit old it's i mean that happened approximately some time before so what the what do these political parties generally do they come up with i mean they come up with each other they cooperate with each other they cooperate with each other to accomplish what common goals and strive for mutual benefit we want to make government we want to make government and after that bjp came up with jdu and nitesh the cm of bihar has suddenly resigned and they have been they have framed the government with bjp na the such kind of news we have heard about it so many times now there is one more thing which when it comes to corporates how many of you use vodafone vodafone 
How many of you use Vodafone? Even I use Vodafone. So Vodafone plus ICICI Bank basically have entered into a strategic alliance. The name is how many of you have? I mean, I mean the people who use Vodafone, have you ever given a call to customer care? So they generally used to say, M pesa ke hi pass the buy. Such kind of announcements are generally there. For M pesa, please press 5. So that is M pesa. This M pesa is basically a strategic alliance between Vodafone and ICICI. Okay? What is this? This is for mutual interest. M pesa le, please press 5 for M pesa. The FSI is a strategic alliance. So got it? Should we go ahead? Uh, now the class is going to be over. Now we're going to revise that whatever we have studied in the class itself. For the students who have even a single percent of doubt, please stay there at your seat. We'll be covering each and everything which is there. And from there, doubt can be expected. So let's start revision now. Okay, it's over there. So what is generally amalgamation? Amalgamation is basically when two or more companies are there and a new company is from framed. One company is involved. This is basically rearranging the rights of members and creditors as well. I told you about compromise arrangement. No? Remember that also. Amalgamation is always external in nature. Amalgamation cannot be carried out within the company itself, whereas reconstruction is already all. all I mean, most of the times, almost it's internal only. Business can be sold or take over when it comes to amalgamation. One company absorbs another. I mean, there can be a pharmaceutical company which absorbs a motor vehicle company. So that can be sold, that can be take over. That means business can be changed. But when it comes to reconstruction, the same business is carried on as it just requires the rearranging of rights of creditors. So purpose is to diversify or expand business. To diversify or expand business so this is basically to compound with creditors and to determine liabilities got it should we go ahead should we go ahead okay so this was already done and amalgamation is already on also done for reviving a security so merger is basically when one company absorbs another one company absorbs another just like we used to absorb food and after that, in that position one company takes over another this is governed by companies act this is governed by SAS regulations and stocks of old company these are shareholders of y limited are given shares of x limited and they acquire over here is a limited basically takes over z limited it this is take over the, the person who is going to take over is called acquirer and z limited this is the target company so what is disinvestment? Disinvestment is basically transferring of asset shares control, which is there with government, which is there with government sector to private sector. This is what we call as privatization also. This is the process. The proposals are kept before CCD. CCD is Cabinet Committee on Disinvestment, not Cafe Cafe Day. And after that, an uh, advisor is selected. That, uh, then after that, advertisement is given in newspaper in order to avoid invite public comments so if public has any objection they can raise and need the government belongs to public as well so in case if they have any kind of objections that can be raised after that some short listings are done and after that drafting of share purchase agreement or shareholder agreement i mean how many shares is government are going to sell and related to that the agreement is drafted between the government and that person who is going to purchase those shares and after that once it is it talks about finalization of drafting Finalization of drafted agreement. Now the next is a approval of proposals and agreements. So it's a joint venture. Joint venture is basically when a new enterprise is formed with active participation. Both of the companies are going to actively participate in ownership, control and management. So if there is control of only one party, that is not a joint venture. One party cannot make a joint venture. So business enterprise is basically formed for profit. In which parties basically, I mean, share responsibilities for in an agreement manner that can be for sharing with technology, that can be for sharing risk, that can be for access to market. Now, it talks about franchising. Now, franchising, BTW, first choice, apart from that, Gyanis and a lot of people. So, franchiser, let us suppose that Superprofs is a franchiser over here. He has given all the rights 
to Mr. Right, Mr. X, franchises basically right to carry on business of super props. For that, they need to pay some fees. He is franchisee and the P person who is giving franchisee is franchiser. Now, franchisee is authorized to sell and distribute goods and services. Contract of franchising can be oral, written, express, implied. That can be for fixed period. That can be for uncertain period of time. Apart from that, franchisee. That is considered to be one of the good points that they can use the trademark. If you have taken the franchisee of Nike, you can use this mark. If you can use a, you have taken Adidas, you can use use the trademark of Adidas. If you have taken props to super props, you can use it for super props. Now it's the next topic is slum sale. Slum sale is sale of substantially whole or substantially whole of undertaking. This is governed by section number 180, subsection 1, clause A. If you know section number 180, then it is also good. Write section only if you are 200% sure. 110 talks about postal ballot. Postal ballot. Now, in case of a company, if company has only one, one undertaking, if company has only one undertaking, then it can sell that whole or substantial part of undertaking by just passing a board resolution. If it has one more than one undertaking, then the consent of shareholders is required by way of special resolution. For every time special resolution, try to mention threefold. Never mention seventy-five percent in examination. Try to write special resolution only. Now, this shall be passed pursuant to section number one one zero. Now, the, we have used two words over here: substantial and undertaking. Undertaking is basically which has given, which basically to the main company itself. Let us suppose this is the main company, and in this twenty percent of net worth is of X limited. Then X limited. 20% of net worth is of X limited, then X limited will be considered as undertaking. Or in the total income of 100 rupees, X limited has contributed 25 rupees. In the net worth or total income which has been generated, if the 20% or more of the part has been contributed by one person, then that will be supposed to be the undertaking. Now substantial is 20% or more of value of undertaking. Okay, so some students have doubt in undertaking. A limited basically controls A limited controls Z limited by 20 percent. So what they are basically doing? They have a substantial interest. They have a substantial interest in Z limited. It's substantial interest. So that will also call, be called as associate company. Exactly. So that's why I told you the associate and both of them are basically same. Now, after that, what we have seen is D merger. The very last point, the, let us suppose that is a company, A Limited, which used to manufacture shoes and although they have also some wholesale outlets. The part one is manufacturing shoes. Part two is, I mean, selling of, the, selling of those shoes. Now, what is generally done in D merger? The division or separation of diff, different undertakings of business. Now, being a company, what I'll do is I'll retain one of the parts. The manufacturing of shoes will be retained by A Limited, whereas the second part will be transferred to the new undertaking which has been formed, which is B Limited. Okay, so this is generally known as corporate partition of company into undertakings, whereas I'll one the company will be retaining one part. I mean, the manufacturing part will be retained by A Limited and the second part will be transferred to the new company which has been incorporated. Now, strategic alliance, it being two or more parties to cooperate with each other. That I mean, both of the parties will, are going to cooperate with each other. They are both of them are going to work for common goals and for mutual benefit. As I have given you examples for, of government as well. That what is there in Bihar and Maharashtra as well, the governments are there with alliance. But that is not what you need to write in examination. For strategic alliance, that both of the parties used to pool their resources and competencies for their mutual interest. So this is, there was the best example is Vodafone and ICICI and Bank have basically have entered into a strategic alliance that is M Pesa. So that is all from my side. Thanks. Bye-bye. Take care and feel free to raise your doubts. Now see you in. Next class. Bye.